Hi, I don't have a lot of time, so it'll be quick, and some of it will be useful, and some of them probably won't. That's just how it is. Um, my name's Charlie Key. I am one of the co-founders of Modulus. Uh, at Modulus, we do Node.js and MongoDB hosting for, and we make it as easy as possible. That's it. I'm out. Okay. No, anyway. Um, so this is a story about a company and our love for JavaScript. And it started in around 2011. So in 2011, before Modulus existed, there were three guys and we wanted to make a game. So we wanted to make a game and there are three of us. I was the guy in the middle. Um, uh, other two co-founders, not quite as good looking. I mean, it's, it's all right. And we wanted to take JavaScript and put it everywhere. JavaScript was this thing at the time that was enabling people to build uh, really interactive, great products. Uh, and we wanted to start with a game, and we wanted to use it on the front end and on the back end. So how did we get there? Well, we looked at the front end. JavaScript's always been there, and we've, we've been using that for a long time. So what do we do on the back end? Well, we looked at this, and we looked at the world, and we said, OK, we want to do a multiplayer game. We want to do real time. Node.js is the answer. So we started diving in, and at this point in time, Node was at 068 when we finally pushed an application into production. And that, what that application actually looks like, it still is running today, which is amazing in my mind because we have done nothing with it. It is a multiplayer tic-tac-toe game that you can still go play with your Facebook, and this is basically what it looks like. And it's all in real time. It gives you notifications when you, uh, when you take a turn. Just, we wanted to test it out. We wanted to play around and build something. Uh, this was built and still has not been restarted on the production server in over two years. <laughs> so Node can run in production. Um, so we started, we started building things. And this was, again, before we had really dove into what it would look like to build a platform around this. And we caught some very good lessons super early on. And the first one of these is, while Node isn't particularly hard to get up and running, you know, Node, file, you're running. Server's there, you got everything you need. However, every now and then, we're mostly perfect, but every now and then we write a bug. And when we write a bug, it causes something to break and we get an error. In Node, the best answer is not to just catch these errors and keep going. Actually, the best answer is if you've got an uncaught exception, let it bubble up and actually let the application close. You can catch it. Um, you can use process um, to catch the uncaught exception, go log it somewhere, and then let your process die gracefully and let something like a tool bring it back. In this case, maybe PM2. PM2 is a little bit newer. It's got some nice tools. It has uh, the ability to see how many times you've restarted, your uptime. All of these things are important. Forever is a similar tool. They're great. They're on NPM. Go take a look at them. I'll have all of this up later on SlideShare so you can grab links to all of this. So great. OK. We can actually crash something, restart it, and keep our application running. But what happens when we actually want to figure out what happened with the problem? So how do we debug? And debugging in Node is sometimes a black box, sometimes not. But one of the tools that we found very useful is called Node Inspector. And I'm going to give a quick demo of it. So first of all here, let me. All right. First of all, if you have not seen a Node application, this is a very simple Express Node application. It has some static files. And what's important here is actually you see on line 12, app get is just a request on fun. It's going to return 42. But we want to actually debug this a little bit. So uh, all right, there we go. So I'm in here. I've got my application. I've got my app.js. We can actually start an inter interactive debugger here by installing Node Inspector first, and then now we're just going to run an interactive debugger. And if you're used to JavaScript on the 
Client side, this is gonna look very familiar. It's the same inspector that you can use on the client side, but now we're actually running uh, a Node.js application and looking at it. So I bring up my file, you'll see the same code. If we look at the base application, it's just serving up a little bit of fun. But like, like I said, we have this slash fun. So we can actually put a breakpoint here and we can actually hit server-side code. So now we've got server-side code and we can actually look at the request, the incoming request. We can start to dig in and really actually use this to debug our applications and find where we've got problems going on. This was another first very big lesson that we learned was how do you actually figure this stuff out? Node inspector. So now we've built this proof of concept. We've, we figured out that we love Node, we love JavaScript. So what do we do? We decide we're gonna go build a company around this entire process of taking an application, running it, building it, putting it up into a server and running there, collecting analytics on it. And that's where we came and ended up with Modulus. So fast forward about a year and we've got Modulus sitting here and it's doing a lot of different things. This is actually a small bit of our architecture today. Um, up in the top, you'll see we call um, our website the management part where you actually go in and do things. We call it Aperture, and on you have a command line tool which most developers are gonna use. We call it Fulcrum. They're talking to a single API that handles all of the data management, and then things happen on the servers in the back end when you go and push an application. So we actually take that application, we put it on multiple servers, and deploy it there and figure out how to do that. So that's, there's stuff back there, and then there's the actual machine that's running an application. There's stuff there. And then on the other side, you actually have a running application. So what happens? When we get a request, where's it gonna go? How's it get to your application? All of that, all of it written in Node. There's 50 plus pieces of microservices that are all very much small, self-contained, purpose-driven, written in Node. They have been working wonderfully. We've taken the Node approach to a lot of what we do, we take uh, modules very serious, we try to break our stuff into them, and we use it wherever we can. And a lot of people say there are use cases where you don't wanna use Node, and a lot of people say there's very few use cases where you shouldn't use Node. Well, we've taken a different approach and we've said, all right, when we come across something that we shouldn't use Node, we won't. Gladly, we've really only, only come against uh, one, it's uh, SSL. Uh, decrypting SSL is not great in Node. Uh, it's a very CPU heavy intensive thing and everything else we found that Node has been fantastic for. So we, we have our website. It's all written in Node. It's got Backbone on the front end, Node on the back end. And we go and build this out. We learn a lot of more lessons along the way. One of the first, um, for those using NPM today, please do not use asterisks. Don't use them. They, they will kill you in the future when trying to update your applications, when uh, putting those on different develop machines. All of that will be a big deal in your future. We actually re recommend using a specific version and then coming up with a process on updating that version along the way. Um, even while all NPM modules are supposed to use semantic versioning, and semantic versioning is supposed to make it so you can upgrade to certain versions without actually having a breaking change. But what that means is the developers of those modules have to follow semantic versioning. They don't. Therefore, we can't trust right now that it's gonna be correct if we update to a non-breaking change version. So we have taken a very strict approach ourselves and said we've got a specific version that works and we'll, we reevaluate it every, uh, basically every other release and look at it and see if it needs to be upgraded. That way we're very specific on what dependencies are in our applications and if we go and try to run it on a server, how is it gonna run and what versions of the dependencies are actually there. The other big one is web applications. We use a lot of, Web applications uh, use session data on a regular basis, and if you if you 
can figure out a way around that, having a stateless application is huge. It's, it means that you can take that application and you can run it a number of times on a number of different servers and easily load balance across them. That means you've become an instantly scalable production level application. Now, I know that's not always the way it can be. Therefore, if you do have to use state, and there's some great tools out there, Redis is one of those. Redis is a great in-memory um, storage solution that is backed by disk. We don't worry about the disk, but Redis is a great tool to get great performance out of uh, carrying state across your application. And we actually use it in a couple different ways. We actually use it to, uh, for our session store. And that means that we can also have our other applications, web applications that aren't just our main interface, use that same session store and carry session across multiple web applications. It makes it a, a nice, quick, easy thing. All right, so now we have our web application and behind that sits this big thing that we call Congress. Congress is important. It, it takes care of all of the data and puts it into its data stores and pulls it out and is our single API that we use for managing that layer. So when you go to build an API, and it's one of the typical use cases in Node.js, we've used Express uh, pretty much since the beginning. We've experimented with several different things. We've got some stuff using Happy. But Express, Express is a great tool for building APIs. It is fast, it's easy. Um, as I showed it before, it's very simple to just build an API, build routes, and return that data. Happy is a newer um, version of an API framework. It's built by the people at Walmart, so you know that it's actual production ready. It's running humongous amounts of traffic every single day through the Walmart system, and they've built it from the ground up to handle that amount of traffic and to have a very easy to use, straightforward framework, and they have got a lot of pieces around it for logging and all of the, uh, for logging, validation, it's got everything you need kind of just uh, sitting there in different modules. Happy is the main one. Restify, Restify I think is a very straightforward, um, quick, easy, get it done, have your API available type of thing. Uh, all three are great choices. There's a lot of other frameworks out there today uh, Kraken.js is, is a great uh, larger framework. And then, again, there's many, many, many other ones. So we go and build this uh, API. Again, we're learning as we go along. And the biggest things that we found are horizontal scalability is, is imperative to being able to build a fully production-ready, um, we'll say enterprise, whatever you want to say, Making, that, making sure you can scale horizontally. And what I mean scale horizontally, I mean actually run your Node.js application multiple times and then be able to balance, load balance traffic across those multiple instances of your applications. This means that you can basically put your application on multiple servers and you're going to be able to scale it that way without having to buy a bigger and bigger machine and eventually you run out. The other big thing we learned you don't need to reinvent everything. We're engineers, we love to build everything. We love to build everything from the ground up. But if you're out there to build a product, to build a solution, don't start from scratch. NPM's there. Um, we've got over 70,000 modules in NPM registry today. It's growing faster than anyone, any other package management system in, in the world. It just recently passed Maven for the number of packages there's probably a package for what you're looking to do. Now take your time, research it, make sure that it's properly maintained and that people are working on it. But it's, there's probably something there to help you out. It's a great, way, great, great place to start. Start testing from day one. Pick a, I'm not gonna preach about which packaging, I mean testing system and framework you should use. Pick one, just start testing, writing tests. It's a big deal, it'll save you time in the future. It be, it's a little bit of a pain to get started with, but it makes it so much easier. Node.js specific streams. If you're not, if you 
have started playing around with Node.js and you haven't got to dig in the streams yet, take a little bit of time. They're important. They're one of the core pieces of what Node.js and how it was built. They make a lot of things uh, harder on some aspects, but what they do is they enable you to have anything that would be memory intensive to run through a stream and we can reduce the overall memory footprint that we're, we've got on our system at any one point in time. It, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, there's a, a node module called Stream Adventure, which will guide you through a small tutorial on how to use streams, starting from the very beginning to actually being able to uh, concat streams together and process them along the way. And lastly, keep it simple. We, again, engineers, complex, we like to make hard systems to understand. I don't, it's just ingrained in us. We've, we've ran into this a number of times. Every time we overly complicated a system, we found that we had to go back and reinvent something and change it out. And if there was a problem, we didn't know where it was. Cues, all of these different things. We can keep it, we can keep it simple and it, it's reliable. Then we can go fix it as we need to. Slide of many things. This will be available on SlideShare. This has got the links for most of the things I've talked about, including all of the different tools, and I, this will be available later today. And that leaves about four minutes for questions. That was fast. Thanks, guys.